On Thursday night, the House Democrats passed by a vote of 220 to 210 legislation designed to totally and completely destroy our election process. It's telling that the legislation titled H.R. 1, introduced by the Nancy Pelosi-led Democrats in the House, is a power grab dressed up as election reform, the provisions of which are all intended to create more Democrat voters in upcoming elections in order to secure a permanent Democrat Party control of the legislature and the White House. Passage of this legislation was their first priority. It is numbered ahead of all other proposals because securing power unto themselves in the form of hegemony over the institutions of government is how Marxists and socialists transform the countries they seek to control. H.R. 1 is a collection of election law reforms meant to dictate to states the manner by which that state shall conduct their elections in the future, mandating certain voting practices be followed while making other voting practices illegal. You can fit these classifications into two categories. One, changes in voting processes and procedures that are designed to increase the gross total of votes cast in each election. And two, changes in voting practices and procedures designed to eliminate any effort to improve or protect ballot integrity. We'll go over the key provisions more in detail right after this quick commercial break to pay some bills. After that winter wake-up call and the breakdown of the power grid, nobody can deny we're all quite vulnerable. We saw power grid failures and severe weather made the food supply chain come to a grinding halt in many parts of the country. And whenever that happens, people suffer. That's why it's smart and fairly easy these days to prepare in advance for those disasters by stocking up on long-term storage emergency food. Food that stays fresh for up to 25 years so you never go hungry. I strongly recommend My Patriot Supply, America's leader in self-reliance. They're the only source I use for emergency food planning. And now you can save $50 off a four-week supply of delicious meals that give you 2,000 plus calories a day. That's what you'll need to survive the next disaster. And saving $50 is impossible to pass up, but supplies are limited. So go to preparewithresurgence.com and stock up now. That's preparewithresurgence.com or hit that link in the description box and enjoy the peace of mind that comes with being prepared today. So here's a general summary of the key provisions with regard to voting procedures, mandated and prohibited. Let's start off with the mandates. No excuse, mail-in voting for all voters in all states. 15 days of early voting for any election, including federal office. Automatic voter registration, unless the individual opts out. Upon the submission of personal information, name, address to any state agency for any purpose. Online voter registration up to and including election day. Automatic restoration of voting rights for felons. Allowing ballot harvesting by third parties. Counting of illegal aliens among state populations for the purpose of determining the number of congressional districts in each state. Public financing by creating a $6 to $1 match of federal funds against small donor campaign contributions of $200 or less. Now let's go through the stuff that's prohibited. No voter ID required. No purging of voter rolls. No signature match of mail-in ballots. No redistricting by legislative bodies in the states, only by nonpartisan commissions. No disqualification of ballots for, quote, out of precinct voting. Now, earlier this week, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments in cases from Arizona where the DNC challenged two Arizona election laws, one that criminalized ballot harvesting and one that disqualified any ballot cast by a voter in the wrong voting precinct. Similar election laws are used in many other states. The decision is expected before June, but the sentiment of legal observers is that the justices will uphold both statutes as not violating the Voting Rights Act of 1965. H.R. 1, of course, would make both statutes illegal. Every Democrat voted in favor of passing, and every Republican voted against passing. The legislation now goes to the Senate. Because this legislation must go through the Senate under its normal rules, it will need 60 votes to end debate and proceed to a vote. Similar legislation was passed by the House in 2019 after the Democrats took control of the House but it was never considered in the GOP-controlled Senate. 
Now, even though the Democrats now control the Senate, there is no chance that 10 GOP senators will agree to allow this legislation to come up for a vote. The only path to pass will be ending the filibuster rule. Now, for those that don't know, the filibuster rule is a procedural rule in the Senate. It is not a statute or part of the Constitution. Several years ago, Harry Reid, as Senate Minority Leader, established the precedent that Senate rules could be amended during a legislative session by majority vote. In order to get H.R. 1 brought to a vote in the Senate, Majority Leader Schumer will need to amend the legislative filibuster rule to eliminate the 60-vote requirement to end debate. That change would take only 51 votes. Now, Vice President by Irregularities Harris could break a 50-50 tie and cast a 51st vote to amend the rule and eliminate the filibuster. And that would potentially allow passage of H.R. 1 on a party-line vote in both houses of Congress. Democrat Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema have expressed opposition to eliminating the filibuster. That is exactly why I've been keeping a very close eye on both of these senators since the Georgia election, or what should be called the theft of a nation 2.0 through Atlanta, with Manchin being the most adamant in his position. Earlier this week, he was asked probably for the thousandth time by members of the media about his prior position that he would, quote, never change his mind about ending the filibuster. His response was spot on, quote, never. Jesus Christ, what don't you understand about never? <laughs> Manchin has insisted that his position is based on the principle that for legislation to pass in the Senate, even on a party line vote, there must be meaningful bipartisan involvement by members of both parties. While it isn't necessary to have minority party support in voting for the legislation, Manchin's view is that the minority party must be willing to let the legislation come up for a vote rather than have all the processes of the Senate take place on a raw partisan majority basis. What is also true, however, is that Manchin understands that he is truly the Senate majority leader right now. With the filibuster in place, no legislation has any chance of advancing to a vote without his support. The moment 50 votes becomes all that is needed, his vote is no more meaningful than one of the Senate rhinos who might be persuaded to support Democrat-backed legislation that Manchin opposes. Now, the White House and Majority Leader Schumer can play Let's Make a Deal with Senator Murkowski, Collins, and Romney in an effort to buy their support for any piece of legislation by offering goodies to their states. Critical to Manchin is that the main provisions of the Green New Deal not be allowed to come up for a vote as the coal and natural gas industries are the backbone of West Virginia's economy. So as long as Manchin and maybe Cinema remain unwilling to change the rules to eliminate the filibuster, H.R. 1 should remain stalled in the Senate. But what needs to be fully understood here is that H.R. 1 reflects the dreams of the Democrats, federally mandated elections at the state level, which create avenues by which massive vote irregularity efforts can be orchestrated by Democrat Party interest groups even in states with significant GOP election majorities. This is why rhinos must be snuffed out of our party. And focusing on swing state legislators, as the Donald mentioned in his CPAC speech, these legislators and local reps need to reverse every bat stew election law change, and in fact, strengthen everything involved across the board. If the GOP and allies aren't investing heavily in lawyering up in these states, reversing the damage, we will be toast in the midterm and moving forward. Most of this came by way of redstate.com. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everybody for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.